The Desmostilia, together with Serenia and Probasidia, have traditionally been assigned to the Afrotherian clade Tethytheria, but the relationship has been disputed. A subsequent study shows that, while anthracobunids are definite perissodactyls, Desmostilians share the same number of characteristics necessary for either perissodactyla, making their former assessment as Afrotheres a possibility. Asheroa is the smallest and one of the oldest Desmostilians with an estimated body length of 170 cm. Paleoparadoxia is thought to have fed primarily on seaweeds and sea grasses. The jaws and the angle of the teeth resemble a backhoe bucket. Its bulky body was well adapted for swimming and underwater foraging. Originally interpreted as amphibious, it is now thought to have been a fully marine mammals, spending most of their lives walking across the sea bottom like marine hippos. Studies on its habitat preference show that it favored deep, offshore waters. Its size estimation vary, with the Tsuyama specimen measuring over 2 meters in length and 580 kilograms in body mass. and the other specimens measuring over 3 metric tons in body mass. Desmostylus had a short tail and powerful legs with four hooves. The animal's jaws were elongated and sported forward-facing tusks, which were elongated canines and incisors. Most likely fully aquatic, it is thought to have lived in shallow water in coastal regions, usually less than 30 meters deep. Recent isotope work indicates that Desmostylus more likely lived in freshwater or estuary ecosystems foraging for aquatic freshwater plants. Its less dense bone structure suggests that Desmostylus had a lifestyle of active swimming and possibly feeding at the surface, unlike other Desmostylians that were primarily slow swimmers and or bottom walkers and sea grass feeders. Lophiolides was one of these odd taper relatives, living in Mongolia and China. Standing around 50 centimeters tall at the shoulder, it had a build more resembling a deer or a horse than its pig-like modern cousins, and it was adapted for fast running in open plains, with long slender legs and three-toed hoofed feet that bore most of its weight on the middle digit. Its skull had a nasal region similar to both modern tapers and saiga antelope, suggesting the presence of a short trunk-like nose, but since some of its closest relatives didn't have nearly such well-developed snouts, it seems that Lophiolides evolved its trunk separately to modern tapers. Like other calicotheres, Moropus differed from typical ungulates in having large claws, rather than hooves, on the feet. Three large, highly compressed claws were present on each of the front feet, supported inside by fissured bony phalanges. In a classic example of convergent evolution, Moropus and its kin developed feet which were structured quite similarly to those of the extinct giant ground sloths, their giant claws and hands being a formidable defense against predators. It was one of the largest calicotheres, standing about 2.4 meters tall at the shoulder. Like other schizotherines, the teeth were adapted to browsing, and the narrow skull with high nasal bones comes to a spoon-shaped tip, a characteristic common to leaf-eating mammals that browse selectively, grasping their food with mobile lips and a long tongue. It was an uncommon animal in the woodland and savanna environments where it lived. Some early paleontologists thought the claws of calicotherids were used to dig up roots and tubers, but their teeth were designed for soft foods, and studies of toothware show they ate fruit and seeds. Their forelimbs were specialized to reach, grasp and strip or sweep plants to the mouth. Their anatomical design, posture and locomotion show convergence with other large browsers that feed selectively in a bipedal position, such as the ground sloths and gorillas. Their fossils are uncommon even in areas where other taxa of similar size are well preserved, which suggests they were mostly solitary animals, and unlike horses and brontotheres, never evolved species that lived in herds. Tylocephalonyx was one of the latter group, 
known from the Miocene of North America about 16 to 13 million years ago. Standing about 2 meters tall at the shoulder, it had the same sort of chunky body as other schizotherians and walked around with its large front claws held up to keep them raised away from the ground. But there was also an unusual feature on its otherwise rather horse-like head, a large bony dome on top of its skull, like a mammalian version of a pachycephalosaur. It probably used its dome in the same way as the dinosaurs it convergently resembled, head-butting or flank-butting in fights with each other. Ancelotherium was relatively large, and was built rather like a taquin, with some individuals reaching 2 meters high at the shoulder and a weight of 450 kilograms while it had the typical long forelimbs and short hind limbs of a calicother, like other schizotherians, it did not walk on its knuckles. It had the highest crown teeth of any calicother, suggesting a diet of more abrasive plants. While this has been reconstructed as leaves, twigs, and tree bark, one skull discovered in China was from a dry steppe zone with few trees, the genus may have been less dependent on browsing leaves than other calicotheres. Ancelotherium's habitat was the savannas of Eurasia, East and South Africa. As an herbivore, it evolved to browse on vegetation on the trees in the grassy savannas of Africa. Anisodon, a relatively small calicother from the late Miocene of Europe, about 15 million years ago. Standing 1.5 meters tall at the shoulder, it looked somewhat like a cross between a gorilla, a horse, and a giant sloth, or like a mammal trying to mimic a therizinosaur. Its long forelimbs were probably used to pull down high tree branches so it could browse on the leaves, while spending most of its time sitting on its well-padded haunches. Calicotherium, like many members of Perissodactyla, was adapted to browsing, though the calicotheres were uniquely adapted to do so among ungulates. Its arms were long and heavily clawed, allowing them to walk on their knuckles only. The arms were used to reach for the branches of large trees and bring them close to its long head to strip them clean of leaves. The horse-like head itself shows adaptation to a diet of soft vegetation, since, as the animal reached sexual maturity, the incisors and upper canines were shed, suggesting that its muscular lips and the resulting gum pads were enough to crop fodder which was then processed by squarish, low-crowned molars. Malayan tapers are easily recognizable by their distinctive black and white coloration. They have a black front half and a white hind half, resembling a reversed panda. Like all other tapers, they have a long, flexible and prehensile upper lip that they use to grab leaves and other vegetation. This adaptation helps them navigate dense forests and efficiently feed on vegetation. They are primarily solitary animals, and they are known to be nocturnal. They also are excellent swimmers and often retreat to water to escape predators. They have a unique swimming style where they float on the surface and use their snouts as snorkels. Their populations are declining due to habitat loss, fragmentation, and hunting. Tapers play a crucial role as seed dispersers in their ecosystems. They consume fruits and deposit seeds in different locations, contributing to forest regeneration and maintaining biodiversity. Tapers are ancient creatures with a fossil history dating back to around 50 million years. They have changed very little in terms of their physical appearance over this extensive period. South American Taper is an excellent swimmer and diver, but also moves quickly on land, even over rugged, mountainous terrain. It has a lifespan of approximately 25 to 30 years. In the wild, its main predators are crocodilians and large cats, 
which often attack tapirs at night when tapirs leave the water and sleep on the riverbank. It is known to run to water when scared to take cover. Using its mobile nose, it feeds on leaves, buds, shoots and small branches it tears from trees, fruit, grasses and aquatic plants. They also feed on the vast majority of seeds found in the rainforest. The dwindling numbers of the South American tapir are due to poaching for meat and hide, as well as habitat destruction. It is generally recognized as an endangered animal species, but it has a significantly lower risk of extinction, though, than the other four tapir species. The Baird's tapir may be active at all hours, but is primarily nocturnal. It forages for leaves and fallen fruit, using well-worn tapir paths which zigzag through the thick undergrowth of the forest. The animal usually stays close to water and enjoys swimming and wading, on especially hot days, individuals will rest in a watering hole for hours with only their heads above water. When in danger, these animals will seek water. The Baird's taper has a symbiotic relationship with cleaner birds that remove ticks from its fur, the yellow-headed caracara and the black vulture have both been observed removing and eating ticks from tapers. Baird's tapers often lie down for cleaning, and also present tick-infested areas to the cleaner birds by lifting its limbs and rolling from one side to the other. There are many contributing factors in the decline of the species, including loss of habitat from deforestation, forest fires, and large-scale industrial projects. Hyracheus was an early member of the rhinoceratoids, this particular genus was very widespread for much of the Eocene, found across Eurasia and North America, crossing back and forth between the continents via the North Atlantic Land Bridge. The Jamaican Hyracheus lived during the Midiocene, around 45 million years ago, and was very anatomically similar to other species of this genus, with the known fossil material not being considered distinct enough to be assigned to a new species yet. Its presence in ancient Jamaica suggests that there may have been some sort of land connection between the Proto-Island and Central America during the early Eocene when a chunk of what would eventually become western Jamaica was located much closer to the coasts of Honduras and Nicaragua. Hyracodon was a lightly built, pony-like mammal of about 1.5 meters long. Its skull was large in comparison to the rest of the body and its dentition resembled that of later rhinoceratoids, but it was a much smaller animal and differed very little in appearance from the primitive horses of which it was a contemporary. It had a short, broad snout and its long, slender limbs had three digits. Like the primitive horses, hyracodonts inhabited open forests and wooded steppes and turned from browsing foliage to grazing grass. They died out without leaving any descendants and they mark the end of the phylogenetic branch of hornless, running rhinoceratoids. Like other swamp rhinos, metaminodon has large canines, and metaminodonts generally have larger canines than other swamp rhinos. The shortened snout and large nostrils indicate it had a prehensile lip. It had small neural spines projecting upwards from the thoracic vertebrae, indicating weak neck muscles, which probably was due to buoyancy and a lack of necessity to support the head while submerged. The ribcage was broad and metaminodon had a barrel-like chest similar to the hippo, which could either be an adaptation to an expanding digestive tract or to develop muscles necessary to prevent rolling over in the water. As an early Indracother, Jushia was a relatively small compared to its later relatives, with a body mass estimated at 1,000 kg, held by elongated long legs and small skull firmly attached to a relatively long neck. Based on its triangular-like teeth and sharp protruding incisors, it was probably a strict browser, feeding on ferns and leaves on branches where most herbivorous mammals could not reach. 
In terms of habitat, it lived in densely lush and tropical forests of what is now China. Though a few skeletons have been found, it is unclear whether this early Indracother was permanently solitary or lived in small social groups, possibly harems. Based on its morphology, Jiuxia's long legs probably enabled it to run relatively fast for a limited duration. This was probably a defense mechanism against early mammalian predators. Paraceratherium is the largest terrestrial mammals that has ever existed and lived from the early to late Oligocene epoch. The first fossils were discovered in what is now Pakistan, and remains have been found across Eurasia between China and the Balkans. The shoulder height was about 5 meters, the length about 7.5 meters and its weight is estimated to have been about 15 to 20 tons. It had large, tusk-like incisors and a nasal incision that suggests it had a prehensile upper lip or proboscis. The legs were long and pillar-like. The lifestyle of Paraceratherium may have been similar to that of modern large mammals such as the elephants. Because of its size, it would have had few predators and a long gestation period. It was a browser, eating mainly leaves, soft plants and shrubs. It lived in habitats ranging from arid deserts with a few scattered trees to subtropical forests. Most terrestrial predators in their habitat were no bigger than a modern wolf and were not a threat to Paraceratherium. Adult individuals would be too large for any land predators to attack, but the young would have been vulnerable. Bite marks on bones from the Bugti beds indicate that even adults may have been preyed on by 10 to 11 meter long crocodiles, Astorgosuchus. The reasons they became extinct after surviving for about 11 million years are unknown, but it is unlikely that there was a single cause. Theories include that their large size was related to the now outdated concept of inadaptive evolution, climate change, vegetational change and low reproduction rate. A Ceratherium reached 2.3 meters in length, a height of about 120 centimeters and a weight of nearly one ton its brachiodont dentition suggest it was a browser which fed on leaves and soft vegetables. It had fairly long limbs compared to other Acerotherini, and was proportioned similar to a taper. Males had tusk-like incisors that were much larger than those of the females. Kilotherium is a genus of prehistoric rhinoceros that seems to have had a geographic distribution spreading across Eurasia. It had no nasal horns like rhinoceros are often portrayed as having, but Kilotherium still remained quite unique. Two tusks formed from enlarged incisor teeth rose up from the lower jaw, and while these tusks were present in male and female Kilotherium, they seem to have been larger in the males. This would indicate that the upward-facing tusks had a display purpose, thought he fact that they were also present in females would suggest a species recognition purpose as well as a possible practical application. Some species of Kilotherium are noted as browsers, while others seem to be dedicated grazers. Teleoceros had much shorter legs than modern rhinos, and a barrel chest, making its build more like that of a hippopotamus than a modern rhino. Based on this description, Henry Fairfield Osborne suggested in 1898 that it was semi-aquatic and hippo-like in habits. This idea persisted for about a century, but has recently been discounted by isotopic evidence. Some species have a small nasal horn, but this appears to be absent in other species. Teleoceros has high-crowned molar teeth, which has historically led to suggestions that the species were grazers. The Indian rhinoceros is a rhinoceros species native to the Indian subcontinent. It is listed as vulnerable, as populations are fragmented and restricted to less than 20,000 km square. Moreover, the extent and quality of the rhino's most important habitat, the alluvial terai duar savanna and grasslands and riverine forest, is considered to be in decline due to human and livestock encroachment. Bulls are usually solitary. Groups consist of cows with calves, or of up to six subadults. Such groups congregate at wallows and grazing areas. They are foremost active in early mornings, late afternoons, and at night, 
but rest during hot days. They are excellent swimmers and can run at speeds of up to 55 km per hour for short periods. They have excellent senses of hearing and smell, but relatively poor eyesight. Dominant males tolerate other males passing through their territories except when they are in mating season, when dangerous fights break out. They have few natural enemies, except for tigers, which sometimes kill unguarded calves, but adult rhinos are less vulnerable due to their size. The Javan rhinoceros is one of the smallest rhinoceros species, along with the Sumatran. They are superficially similar to Indian one-horned rhinos, as they have plate-like, armored protective skin folds. Up until the mid-90th to about the early 20th century, it had ranged beyond the islands of Java and Sumatra and onto the mainland of Southeast Asia and Indochina. Today, it is the rarest of all rhinoceros, and among the rarest of all living animal species, with only one currently known wild population, and no individuals successfully kept in captivity. It is among the rarest large mammals on the planet Earth, with a population of approximately 74 rhinos within Yujung Kulon National Park. Its decline is primarily attributed to poaching, for the male's horns, which, despite merely being composed of keratin, are highly valued in traditional Chinese medicine. Loss of habitat and massive human population growth have also contributed to its decline and hindered the species' recovery. Scientists and conservationists rarely study the animals directly due to their extreme rarity and the danger of interfering with such an endangered species. Stephanorhinus species were widespread across Eurasia during the Pleistocene, with fossils found in various locations. They were a relatively large rhinoceros. The size of different species within the genus varied, but they were generally larger than modern rhinoceroses. Like many rhinoceroses, it had one or two horns on its snout. The social structure is not well documented, but it is believed that, like modern rhinoceroses, they were largely solitary animals, with interactions mainly occurring during mating. Images of Stephanorhinus, along with other animals, are depicted in Paleolithic cave art. Cave paintings in places like Chauvet Cave in France feature detailed representations of these ancient rhinoceroses. The woolly rhinoceros is a well-known extinct species of rhinoceros that inhabited northern Eurasia during the Pleistocene epoch. It was covered with long, thick hair that allowed it to survive in the extremely cold, harsh mammoth steppe. It had a massive hump reaching from its shoulder and fed mainly on herbaceous plants that grew in the steppe. Mummified carcasses preserved in permafrost and many bone remains of woolly rhinoceroses have been found. Images of woolly rhinoceroses are found among cave paintings in Eurasia. It had a similar life history to modern rhinos. Studies on milk teeth show that individuals developed similarly to both the white and black rhinoceros. With their massive horns and size, adults had few predators, but young individuals could be attacked by animals such as hyenas and cave lions. They may have used their horns for combat, probably including intraspecific combat as recorded in cave paintings, as well as for moving snow to uncover vegetation during winter. The apparent frequency of intraspecific combat, compared to recent rhinos, was likely a result of rapid climatic change during the last glacial period, when the animal faced increased stress from competition with other large herbivores. The Sumatran rhinoceros is the smallest rhinoceros, although it is still a large mammal, it stands 140 centimeters high at the shoulder, the weight is reported to range from 500 to 1000 kilograms like both African species, it has two horns, the larger is the nasal horn, typically 15 to 25 centimeters, while the other horn is typically a stub. A coat of reddish-brown hair covers most of the Sumatran rhino's body. The Sumatran rhino is a mostly solitary animal except for courtship and offspring rearing. It is the most vocal rhino species and also communicates through marking soil with its feet, 
twisting saplings into patterns, and leaving excrement. The species is much better studied than the similarly reclusive Javan rhinoceros, in part because of a program that brought 40 Sumatran rhinos into captivity with the goal of preserving the species. Though a number of rhinos died once at the various destinations and no offspring were produced for nearly 20 years, the rhinos were all doomed in their soon-to-be-logged forest. Poaching of Sumatran rhinos is a cause for concern, due to the high market price of its horns. This species has been overhunted for many centuries, leading to the current greatly reduced and still declining population. The rhinos are difficult to observe and hunt directly, so poachers make use of spear traps and pit traps. The rainforests of Indonesia and Malaysia, which the Sumatran rhino inhabits, are also targets for legal and illegal logging because of the desirability of their hardwoods. The white rhinoceros is the largest of the five living species of rhinoceros. By mean body mass, the white rhinoceros falls behind only the three extant species of elephant as the largest land animal and terrestrial mammal alive today. The front horn is larger and averages 60 cm in length, reaching as much as 160 cm but only in females. It also has a noticeable hump on the back of its neck. Each of the four stumpy feet has three toes. The color of the body ranges from yellowish brown to slate gray. Its only hair is the ear fringes and tail bristles. White rhinos have a distinctive broad, straight mouth which is used for grazing. Historically the major factor in the decline of white rhinos was uncontrolled hunting in the colonial era, but now poaching for their horn is the primary threat. The white rhino is particularly vulnerable to hunting because it is a large and relatively unaggressive animal with very poor eyesight and generally lives in herds. Even with increased anti-poaching efforts in many African countries, many poachers are still willing to risk death or prison time because of the tremendous amount of money that they stand to make. Rhino horn can fetch tens of thousands of dollars per kilogram on the black market in Asia and, depending on the exact price, can be worth more than its weight in gold. Black rhinos are generally thought to be solitary, with the only strong bond between a mother and her calf. They are not very territorial and often intersect other rhino territories. Home ranges vary depending on season and the availability of food and water. They have a reputation for being extremely aggressive, and charge readily at perceived threats. They have even been observed to charge tree trunks and termite mounds. Black rhinos will fight each other, and they have the highest rates of mortal combat recorded for any mammal, about 50% of males and 30% of females die from combat-related injuries. Adult rhinos normally have no natural predators, thanks to their imposing size as well as their thick skin and deadly horns. However, adult black rhinos have fallen prey to crocodiles in exceptional circumstances. Black rhinos follow the same trails that elephants use to get from foraging areas to water holes. They also use smaller trails when they are browsing. They are very fast and can get up to speeds of 55 km per hour running on their toes. Dicerotherium lived during the Oligocene and Miocene epochs, roughly between 33 to 11 million years ago. Fossils have been found in North America. It was a rhinoceros with a unique feature of having two pairs of horn-like structures on its snout. Like modern rhinoceroses, it was likely herbivorous, feeding on vegetation in its habitat. The exact reasons for their extinction are not fully understood and could be related to environmental changes and shifts in vegetation. Elasmotherium was a giant rhinoceros that lived during the mid to late Pleistocene epoch. Found across much of the Eurasian steppe dry grassland environments, it stood around 2.5 meters tall at the top of its humped shoulders and weighed about 4 tons, making it close in size and mass to a modern elephant. It was the last known representative of a particularly ancient lineage of rhinos, last sharing a common ancestor with modern forms over 40 million years ago. 
A large bony dome on its forehead is traditionally thought to have supported an enormous keratinous horn like the distantly related woolly rhino, but a 2021 study has recently challenged that interpretation. The dome structure was actually rather thin-walled and wouldn't have been able to support the weight of a giant horn, instead probably being covered by a much stumpier backwards-pointing nub, while an enlarged nasal cavity inside the dome also suggests it may have actually functioned as a resonating chamber.